Welcome to Star Wars Action News, helping Star Wars collectors collect better. Hello everybody, this is Jerry here with my latest Vintage Viewpoint, and this time, I've got a guest. Hey everybody, this is Brock. Hey, I'm glad you could be here, and if folks are wondering why Brock and I are teaming up for a Vintage Viewpoint, actually... You know, it's it's not just a vintage viewpoint. It's kind of a book review. So we're talking today about the ultimate guide to vintage Star Wars action figures, 1977 to 1985, written by Mark Belomo. Now listen, Jerry, this is the second segment in recent memory. You're doing <laughs> books here. Now let's just make something very clear. I do books around here. You do vintage stuff, and if we keep the lines drawn, there'll be no problem. Do you get me? No problems at all. Well, you know, we we got to give the uh, listeners a little peek behind the curtain a little bit. I mean, you know, when we were at this week's production meeting for Star Wars Action News, we had this topic, and yeah, Brock and I fought over it. It's a book. No, it's vintage. It's a book. No, it's vintage. So Jonathan, being the great peacekeeper, said, guys, just do it together. But you're right. I, I yeah, That's why I definitely wanted to make sure you're on board this time, because I think my last segment was on a couple vintage-era books, the... Um, C-3PO and R2-D2 teaching us about space travel, and I picked up one of those storybooks. So, yeah, I, I, I want to be cool here. I mean, this is – I feel like there's a line with, like, nonfiction that it's it's okay to talk about it. But, hey, you're here. Everything's cool. You can make sure it's, it's legit. So And I got to tell you, I had that science book growing up. That was one you? of the books we had in the house, <laughs> and we never read it. We always looked at the pictures, like you said. And because of your segment, I actually went on eBay and got a new version of this vintage – Empire Strikes Back storybook because as far as I can remember the covers were falling off ours so now I have a nice pristine one for my book collection which I've always meant to get because of your segment it inspired me to do so and if anyone's wondering five dollars shipped from a smoke-free home it's in fantastic condition the binding is intact so it is doable to get a good storybook collection for a good price if you shop around but I digress there you go you know uh, Brock since since this is one of uh, you know half a book review are we gonna have to do a a spoiler free as possible review of this book <laughs> You copy courtesy of our own bank accounts. Yes, uh, exactly. yes. pretty much. Courtesy of Amazon in this case. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should spoil these books rotten because I think people really want to know about what exactly are we talking about today with vintage collectible books. Is that even a viable thing to go into for a vintage collector? Well, let's take a look at uh, Mr. Belomo's work here. So first off, if you don't know who Mark Belomo is, he probably is best described as an overall toy action figure enthusiast. He's written... A handful of books on G.I. Joe, Transformer Collecting, uh, also a, a book called Totally Tubular 80s Toys that gets into totally a lot of tubular, it. Totally Tubular, man. Uh, yeah, radical, gnarly to the max. And he, um, I've, I've heard him on some other shows, other podcasts. He was recently on Galaxy of Toys uh, not too long ago uh, talking about this book. And, you know, he he collects all action figures from major lines, you know, all the way back to the 60s. I mean, I, I can't imagine what this guy's... Uh, home looks like with the amount of action figures that he probably has. I personally know him best in terms of his works from his ultimate guide to G.I. Joe, 1982 to 1994. I probably shared this story on Star Wars Action News before, but I had a friend who pulled up all of his childhood G.I. Joe toys, and he and his brother had basically one of everything each, so he had two of everything. And he literally, from 1982 to 1986, had every G.I. Joe item, every vehicle, playset, action figure, everything. But he really didn't know what to do with it. He wanted to sell it to the uh, Collector's Warehouse, which is in uh, Fairfield, Ohio, not too far from my house. Most folks probably know them as the Earth Collectible Toy Mall. And I said, nah, nah, you know, they're, they're not going to probably give you quite what it's worth. Let me, let me take a look at it. Beautiful shape. He had everything. But the problem is... I didn't know what every little missile and part was to every ship. I was a big G.I. Joe fan, but I didn't collect them as a kid, so I wasn't as knowledgeable. And I went to my local Books A Million, and I picked up his book, and it did a beautiful job of taking any given item and, and laying out all the pieces and saying, you know, what it came with, what you can expect to get for it, what year it was released, you know, what it was called, because he didn't have all the instruction manuals and things like that. And the, and the book was just a tremendous reference if you're gi joe fan you totally gotta check that thing out nice yeah no it's great so when i heard that mark was doing a star wars 
version, basically, of that same style book. I, I was really excited about it. So the book was released in November of 2014, so just been out a few months uh, by Krauss Publications. It is currently available on Amazon, BarnesandNoble.com, places like that, for about $18 or $19. So right now it's a, it's a very easy grab if you're interested in it. It's a paperback book. And as the title implies, it focuses on vintage Star Wars figures and toys, from 1977 to 1985. So he starts with the early bird kit and works his way all the way to Ewoks and droids. Nice. So he includes Ewoks and droids in there? Yes. Nice. Yeah, so it is complete. So he focuses on what was released in North America. So you're not going to see any pallet toy stuff. But since Yak Face was released in Canada, which for my money, it's like, hey, that's really the only one true Star Wars film figure. I would have thrown him in any way. But Velix is not in this book, so it does cover droids and Ewoks, but since Velix was only released in Brazil, it's not in the scope of this book, which is fine. I mean, there's a practicality aspect of it, because Mark does photograph his own items. To include that in the book, eh. So the book is pretty much broken down into two parts. Part one is action figures, and part two is creatures, playsets, and vehicles. The action figure portion of the book is more than half of the book, and not only is it the three and three-quarter inch Kenner figures that we all know and love, but it also includes the large-scale action figures. So what we would probably refer to as a 12-inch scale, even though some figures were shorter and some figures were taller, Vader, IG-88, they were more in the 13, 14, 15-inch range, but you, you know what I mean, that... that brief series of figures that Kenner made in the early 80s. I have a whole bunch of them. The strengths of this book, number one, is the, the photographs are beautiful. So Mark, like I said, photographs his, his own items. He focuses on the variations. So if you kind of want to see the difference, a side-by-side -side comparison of a Obi-Wan with white hair versus an Obi-Wan with gray hair, you know, the paint on his hair and his beard, side-by-side, -side, you can really look at them and, and understand the difference. Is it loose or on card? This is a perfect book for loose collectors. So there are, that, that's actually kind of one of my beefs of the book. If you're going to call it an ultimate guide, and I'm being really nitpicky here. It's more of a marketing term or whatever. The ultimate guide. But, you know, no, it, there's not a lot of packaging photos in here. There's some. There's a handful. The Stormtrooper, for instance, does show a couple of the card backs. But by and large, it is loose. The interesting thing about it is each figure gets a full page. In fact, the first 12 figures get about two pages each. So each figure has a little bit of a description to it. In some cases, they're six or seven paragraphs long, and one paragraph or less is actually about the figure. So Mark goes into a lot of the in-universe EU, if you will, history of the character, which admittedly I thought was odd. So if you have Vintage Luke, the first figure, right, does he go into also the variant with the blonder hair and the darker pants, et cetera, et cetera, the telescoping saber? Is all three of those pictured or just the original figure first, and then he has the first 12, and then if there's variations, it goes on to later in the book? Exactly. Uh, Tatooine looks a, a, a great place to start. So, again, the pictures are excellent. So you see a full picture of Luke with the lightsaber in hand, and then off to the side on the opposite page is Luke with the lightsaber pulled out so you can see exactly what that accessory looks like. Then there's a picture above it that shows what he refers to as Luke Skywalker color variations. So you have the yellow hair, the brown hair, and in the middle there's a, there's a third Luke that kind of looks like his pants are a little uh, of a lighter tan. He has the three shown, so you can take a look at that. So below he has another picture that has like the single telescoping lightsaber Luke next to a double telescoping lightsaber Luke. So you get that understanding of the, uh, uh, you know, of that accessory difference that came with the, the early bird kit. As I'm looking at the Tatooine Luke here, there are, there are six paragraphs that talk about Luke, how he grew up, his aunt and uncle, pretty comprehensive about his in-universe history. And then the last paragraph actually talks about the figure. Goes into the d double telescoping lightsaber, the early bird kit. But you might get on a figure like R2-D2, and there are eight paragraphs about R2-D2, and quite literally the last two sentences are about the figure. It seems to me that their focus should be on the figures themselves instead of the history of the character, but there was a decision made somewhere in editorial and that's fine, but to me it seems like superfluous for uh, that kind of guide to have that much history on something that if people are collecting vintage action figures, they probably already know. I would love to have had more about Kenner's designs, and oh, it would have been great if there had been some prototypes or 
sketches uh, about that, you know, Kenner early sketches uh, of the figure itself. Again, a matter of practicality. I mean, how many people in the Star Wars collecting world has those type of things to put in the book? I mean, you'd have, probably have to have a major collaboration. Exactly. So I, I get it. So you'll probably get that, yeah, hey, that's, that's not going to be anything that's going to impact uh, how, how much I recommend this book to our listeners. But uh, it, it, it's odd. I, it really caught me uh, a little off guard. That said, one of the absolute biggest strengths of this book, I think, is when you get into the large-scale action figures and then definitely into the creatures, playsets, and vehicles. Because what this book does, and if, if you're collecting, if you're truly collecting these things for the first time, or maybe you're trying to piece together a complete version of one of those figures or a playset, what this book does an excellent job of is, just like with the G.I. Joe example I talked about, laying out, hey, here are all the pieces and the parts to this playset. Perfect example, the Droid Factory. So if you're collecting a loose Droid Factory, uh, it shows you all the little arms and the, the, the little hoses and the little pegs, and you can, you, can, you can almost buy two copies of this book if you care to and check off you know, what you need to acquire to complete any given item in your collection. That's amazing. I can't imagine that. That's it, amazing. The other thing, I'll tell you what, the other thing that I really like about this book, too, is that all the pictures are, are, are large. You know, they're, they're sizey pictures. They're easy to look at. There have been some books, you know, done that put so many items, Star Wars items, in a single book that any given picture is like a, is like a little thumbnail. And you can you can almost barely appreciate the image of that item. You know, it's more of just a, a list, a guide of a book, which serves its purpose, Mm -hmm. to the everything collector, the enthusiast who collects things from different categories. But for this book, focusing on, on the Kenner, the vintage toys and figures, these pictures are amazing. Mm -hmm. Two items that aren't in this book are the die-cast vehicle lines, you know, like the TIE Bomber and the Slave One, the Millennium Falcon, yep. you know, that they, they made for the first two movies, and mm -hmm. then the Micro Collection. Oh, so, but you can write that book, man. You have all the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, yes. Also missing from this book are things like the role play items, so the other things that Kenner made, like the lightsabers and the bop bags and the switcheroos, you know, the, all those non-action figure related accessories, which I, I didn't even necessarily expect those to be in there, but what I've seen from Mark on Facebook is that I, I think he's hoping to add the die cast and the micro collection item into a second edition down the road. So, you know, Brock, the interesting thing is, you know, like I said, I already, I already alluded to this being an ultimate guide is what's called ultimate guide to vintage Star Wars action figures. But I don't know about you. I have probably three or four books in my collection that are about the toys. And in fact, one of them is a Steve Sansweet book from 2012 called the ultimate action figure collection. So someone's lying. So, yeah, there can only be one ultimate, right? <laughs> well, maybe they could have a, a bodaciously rad one, as you, what you said before. Totally, totally tubular. tubular, yes. The That's totally tubular do. guide. To, see, that that I would have respected. Yeah, this is being honest about it. Well, it's funny you should say that because one thing that you don't have is uh, – and one of the reasons you asked me to come here is that because I am lucky enough to have an actual copy of Star Wars Vintage Action Figures, a C guide for collectors by John Kellerman. It's one of those books that's very hard to find nowadays. It's out of print. It came into print in 2003, and it has been long considered a Bible for folks like yourself who are big, big vintage action figure collectors. And I'll tell you why. I'll go into ex what the difference is between the book you just described – and the one right in front of me. Now, this book, as I said, is out of print. It's very hard to find a copy of it, especially in Mint. My copy, unfortunately, is not in Mint anymore because I've read it a few times. Uh, I am not as hardcore a vintage collector as you are, but I bought this book because of the absolute amazing pictures in here. There's like 900 pictures. And believe it or not, I got this book in 2008, and I thought I got it in Manhattan, but I got it actually in 2008 here in Illinois, and I had it ordered. I got it at cover price. Uh, with shipping for 42 bucks. And <laughs> and if, it's why, why it's funny to Jerry, because he knows this, if you want to go online now and get this book, it's $500. Let me tell you a little story about that. The, the other reason why I really want to have you here is because I've been following an auction to where the gentleman <laughs> has a buy it now for 320 Boom. And I, well, hey, it gets better. He had to make an offer, so I offered him 250 And he countered at 280 
And you know, I'm I'm thinking about it because yeah, I mean, there's there's other options on there right now. Buy it now, six hundred bucks, eight hundred bucks. Th those people are smoking crack. If you got eight hundred dollars, you want to invest into the vintage collecting area. Buy a freaking yak face, okay? I mean, buy buy an actual item for eight hundred dollars, right? Don't don't buy a book. Agreed. But <laughs> I want to really get how impressed will I be by from this book? Tell us all about Kellerman because I've 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 heard about Kellerman the Kellerman book for over ten years. I've seen it once and twice in person, and I I cannot believe I didn't buy it back in two thousand three. I have no idea why I didn't. I had to hunt this down, by the way. I had I got the last copy. I got it from Skokie or someplace. I had to ship it over to me. It was crazy. So what makes this book special is it goes into – it has very basic stuff. It only goes into – when I say basic stuff, it only focuses on the three and three-quarter inch line and specifically the action figures. So when you talked before about the the big figs, the 12-inch line, micro collection, none of that's here. The Beasts, the Tauntaun, the Wampa, the play sets, those are only mentioned and shown in pictures if they have something to do with – vintage action figures so if they had a pack-in like so the early bird kit is here because it's a pack-in with figures right or the mail aways that are on the back of the figure cards then they'll show pictures of that they have the collector's cases all the variants of the all the variants of the tray ones with the you know when we talk about we take the two trays out and hit the different uh, picture dioramas in the front you see all the they have yeah. the collector's cases yeah. because they had something to do with the action figures or a pack-in with the action figures so that being said, you, this is not as exhaustive as yours with the play sets with all those different pictures of the pieces, which I am envious of because I don't have that here. But what it does do, it goes into – there's two or three different sections here that you would be of interest of. The first section is each individual figure loose, photographed, and giant pictures, as you said, like nine pictures on a page. And they do have – if it's a big variant like the big head Han Solo or the different colored haired Luke of Vespin or the snake of Yoda – they have those two pictures side by side, but most of the time it's one single picture for each figure, and it's loose. The next section is every single one of those figures carded, and hmm. not only is it carded, it's each appearance on all three of the movies. So if you, if you nice. think about this nowadays, folks, if you go into your Walmart or Target, you're not going to find a figure that they released on the Power of the Force line, Power of the Force 2, I should say, uh, on a new card. But here, they show you they had Snaggletooth, the little red Snaggletooth, <laughs> on a Return of the Jedi card because they had the shelf space to have it, right? And because they knew that people were going back and collecting all the figures they missed. So you can actually see the variants of the photographs as well, how they changed the Ben Kenobi picture or they changed the Tatooine Luke to the Gunner picture. You can see all of that stuff and in the second section of this. Then it goes into a third section of the card backs. And if you remember collecting vintage, you'll know there are thousands of – or it seems like thousands of variations of not only just the 20 back or the 41 back, but each card back combination of a Star Wars card with the Boba Fett mail away or the one with his picturing the firing or the one where they have the picture of the, uh, the, the sketched picture of all 12 figures or on the Return of the Jedi line when they had the Admiral Akbar mail away or the blacked out Ewoks. Every variation of the card back is in this book. And then it goes into a chart that you can see for those people who are trying to eye fakes of what card back, front <laughs> and back combinations actually exist. So you will not have to worry about getting um, some guy putting the wrong figure on an, a wrong card. It, it's exhaustively, exhaustively indexed. He has charts. He has his own numbering system so you can figure this out, and when you're – you basically try to adapt that numbering system so you can have a shorthand with other collectors. He tried doing something like that. It, it's just unbelievable. Then he goes into mailers, uh, mail away stuff. Uh, you know how you would mail away for Bosk or Nia Num or Anakin or the Emperor. He has the pictures of the uh, little inserts of those catalogs we used to get. We used to love those things. I'm not sure if you about you, but I had like a stack of those catalogs from all those. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. They have pictures of them in in mint. They have pictures of. Remember that one about the action displays that you can mail away for those little white stands. Sure. Okay. They have pictures of that here too. I picked up that set at C6 actually. That and the coins are the the only two mail aways I never did for some reason. And they have every single coin here, front and back, to see as well. He has the um, he goes into furthermore the special three packs they put out, or like the six packs or twelve packs catalogs would sell them in twelve packs to get rid of extra stock. If you recall about that sort of thing, so yeah. it is exhaustively indexed of every kind of variation there could be of three and three quarter inch 
collectibles. The only complaint I have in the first section with the loose figures, while it's great they have the weapons not in the hands so you can see what kind of weapons they actually are better, mm -hmm. um, the flash is too bright. Every single one is shiny because of the flash. And so that the photographs aren't the best if you want detail. But you get the detail on the carded stuff, so it really works itself out. Beyond all that stuff I'm telling you about, it also goes into uh, press proofs a little bit about different variations of the cards and how they came about with the different colors and the bubble behind the bubbles. Some foreign stuff and how they changed and put stickers on stuff for different countries. They do have some vehicle packaging that shows um, flat stuff. Like you probably get into this because you love packaging stuff. Mm -hmm. It has uh, all flat uh, examples and uh, packaging sign-off checklists that you can see how the quality control went. And I have no idea. Oh, and then the best part of it all, the best part of all is that you have the store displays, the cardboard store displays that advertise oh, wow. the action figures. And you have tons and tons of pictures of that. Now, I know people collect all that kind of stuff too, and I haven't seen most of this. And then there's that one picture that, pops out at me like, I remember this one. And they don't go into, as you said before, they don't go into the play action laser guns or the lightsabers. But if there's a display for the lightsabers, it's in here. And it, not every he admits that the display part is the weakest part of the book in that he can't obviously show every single variation. But he shows as much as he can get his hands on. And it's just, to me, that's a bonus of the book. You're going to get this book for the front, back card variations and the actual figure pictures. And so I, I've, I've gone on and on about what's in this hmm. book. Wouldn't it be great if the micro collection was in here? Yes. Wouldn't it be great if he actually went into a small section about the beasts? Yes. But this book isn't about that. This one is a definite textbook, I would say, an ultimate guide to understanding what variations exist for the exhaustive Star Wars vintage collector. And if you're looking to – especially if you're looking to spot someone trying to pull a scam on you. So this is – an exhaustive, exhaustive tome, and I cannot recommend someone like yourself who collects vintage to get a copy of this book. It's insane. <laughs> well, yeah, and actually, actually, no, you remind me, I, I, I didn't mention that there are four pages in Mark's book with the coins. He shows the coins with the figures when they were released with figures like, you know, Power of the Force only came with coins, droids, Ewoks, so he, he adds that. But then he does have four pages for, hey, here are the other coins for, you know, basically part of that mail away. So the Yoda, mm -hmm. the Wiki, you know, figures that got released with and without coins. He only shows the fronts, so you don't get all the, the, the text on the back, but that's pretty good. I mean, a lot of these, I, you know, I couldn't even tell you what the image for the, the TIE fighter pilot, for instance, on the coin looked like. And, you know, it's in this book. So he, he does cover that. I just got it because the photographs were amazing. And I knew I would never have all those card variations, etc. I have a way to have it. Oh, and yeah. That's that's kind of like uh, you, you sort of live vicariously through the book. I mean, with a book a like bit. that in your hands, you almost don't need to collect. Uh, that, that's kind of like Gus and Duncan's uh, Guide to the Prototypes in the Unproduced Toys. That book is amazing because it shows great photos of things that are literally one of a kind I'll never own but you know because I have that book in my hand I don't feel like I need to I, I can understand. reference them I can look at them so I, I totally hear what you're saying I totally hear mm -hmm. what you're saying yeah um, and it's really kind of cool to see the death squad commander next to the death star oh sure yeah you know? yeah, yeah and that sort of thing it goes it tries to tries to explain how the luck uh, he tried to explain how the Zuckus and Four Law mix-up happened. It's kind of interesting that going that stuff. A quick trivia question for you. So you know Yak Face was the one that's never produced in the United States. Mm -hmm. This book has all the figures in order, of production order. So do you know the last figure produced in the line domestically? The actual last figure according to the sequence. Um, oh, well, I'd, I'd have to guess here. I don't know. Let's but I, I guess. I, I would guess it was EV-99. Incorrect. It is the Imperial Dignitary. Oh, okay. As well it should have been. Exactly. It's like the one, oh, great, Mom. Thanks. Imperial yeah. Dignitary. That's, well, yeah, that's just it. When, when Kenner made Imperial Dignitary, they're like, man, we're done. We'll never top that. <laughs> we're jumping the pants on that one. Yeah. Totally. Totally. So I just want to mention one more thing that we've mentioned how expensive this book is. They've been talking for many years of doing a second printing of this thing. And there's a website that you're supposed to be able to order this thing. Uh, for years now, since like 2011, we're going to put that website address on the Star Wars Action News website, and I'm going to give it to our enhancer so we can put it right here on the enhancement right here. It's called the second edition of the book, and he's probably going to try to expand things, blah, blah, blah. But they're even they're, – they're charging like 100 bucks for it, or they were going to be charging 100 bucks for it if it ever gets produced. I don't know what the status is currently of the reproduction or the second edition of the book, but I do hope 
that it does come out because it would reduce the price of the book I have. And not only that, a, a lot of people can have this book and they should. It's a shame it's out of print because, believe me, it, it's just remarkable. Things in here that you can probably see this on the internet, sure, but these photographs are so good. You're going to want to look at this book in your oh, hands. Oh, yeah. There's, there's something about having a book in your hands and flipping through the pages and sitting comfortably in your couch and going through it. And, and uh, hey, yeah, I've, I've got my name on that list. I know it's been out there for, for a while. For $100, I wouldn't hesitate. The 280 that I kind of have an opportunity that, you know, I guess in the next 48 hours, whenever that offer's done, <laughs> eh, I don't know. 280, there's a couple other vintage things I think I'd rather per actually purchase for the collection. So I got to really think about it. I, I, I didn't know. It makes sense. The book's called Action Figures, but I didn't, although Mark says too, I didn't know that it didn't have play sets and vehicles in, in it. I, I actually thought it did. What you describe with the Kellerman book is absolutely like an ultimate guide to vintage action figures. Well, you know, Kellerman's smart. He doesn't say ultimate. He's not crazy like those other guys. You know, he right. Like, he doesn't even up. claim it, but it sounds like he could. I think Mark's got a an easy claim on ultimate guide to loose vintage collectibles. Because, like I said, there's very few packaging shots. Now, he's got the mail-aways. He's got the carrying cases. He's got the Darth Vader head. Got excellent photographs of those items. It is ultimate, but your expectations needs to be like on on the loose end. And for eight, you know, right now, Amazon eighteen dollars and thirty three cents. Absolutely, go buy this book. I mean, that's an incredible value. If for no other reason, if this was just the ultimate guide to vintage Star Wars play sets and vehicles, with all the photography and all the the accessories that you can see if he had left the action figures out this book would have still been an amazing purchase but i'm glad the action figures are there it's always better to have them versus not having them well you've convinced me i i have the kellerman book it's in my hands literally as i'm talking to you right now right. <laughs> and i'm going to buy the book you're talking about because even though i have what i consider like an amazing amazing book about star wars action figures what you're talking about sounds like a great read has different pictures and has more pictures of what i don't have so even if you have the Kellerman, and also for 20 bucks you can't beat it, and oh, right. you can support our show by clicking the by clicking the link on our homepage and to going through our Amazon through our site. So everybody yep. wins. I'm definitely going to be doing this. I will be purchasing this book probably by the time this airs. I will have the book. <laughs> I mean personally, I feel like with Mark's book, the Gus and Duncan prototype book, and Steve Sansweet's concept of screen to collectible book, I think those three are my ultimate references you know that there's a little bit of everything among those three books and i think this i think mark's new book here fits in with those those two quite well all right well brock thanks for joining me here on this week's vintage viewpoint well jerry i appreciate the invitation it shows me that you really do care i was you know i was just gonna say hey <laughs> do you do you want to say the line oh well, can but jerry really? did but jerry oh. did so oh, well. that's absolutely well, right not only do i really care but brock really cares <laughs> You can take that to the bank. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video. You can see full episodes of Star Wars Action News with more collecting news and reviews at SWActionNews.com. We also have thousands of toy and collectible photos in our photo gallery. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. May the pegs be stocked and the Force be with you.